Okay, so this is part two of our exam to review. And welcome everybody. I'm going to begin where we left off yesterday and, and we're going to solve a system of equations, okay? x minus 2y is equal to 5. 2x minus 4y is equal to 1. Let me uh, go ahead and say that I think that substitution is the best for this one. Okay, and I'm going to show you guys, I want to do two examples, one with substitution, one with elimination. Now I'm going to put a little one with a circle. This indicates that's equation one. Here's equation two. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take equation one and I'm going to solve it. And if you look at it, X, I'll solve it for X. Either variable, solve it for one of the variables. That's what you do. Okay, and get X by itself here in this case, and we'll have positive 2i plus 5. Okay, the point of this is what we're going to do with, with this part of this equation now is everywhere we have an x in the other equation, we're going to plug that in. Instead of x, we're going to plug 2y plus 5 in. That's substitution. That's how you begin that. And so watch what happens with that, okay? So here we go. So that's equation one. So now I'm going to take equation two again, and let's go here, equation two. So I'm, instead of x, I'm going to open a set of parentheses up, right? 2x minus 4y is equal to one. Okay, and so now I'm going to put this in, okay? So 2y plus 5 is now my x. Now look at what I have. Now I have just a linear equation, simply solve for y. So we want to simplify and solve for y. So let's distribute the two and then combine like terms. So we'll have 4y plus 10 minus 4y is equal to 1. Okay, and so combine like terms. I have 4y minus 4y, right? So that cancels. Yes, there's a surprise here. And let's see, what is left? Simply, what is left on the left side of the equal sign? Just bring down that one. You see what's happening. The variables are canceling out. And so that's going to shock you a little bit. You're going to want to second guess yourself on the test and don't do that. If you know you've done the problems correctly, you know, you just keep going until you get this, this type of step, okay? Until you come to here and you ask yourself, is this true? or false. So since this is false, that means there are no solutions. That also means these two lines are parallel. If you look at them, they have the same slope. Okay. So you can have a no solution if it comes out false. Similarly, you know, we probably might not get to do one that's a true statement, but if this happens and they all, the same thing happens and you end up with something like 2 is equal to 2 or 0 is equal to 0, you know, those would be true statements, okay? So if that happens, these would be true statements and you would have, what, infinitely many solutions, okay? All right, true statements. I mean, there's infinitely many. How did you find solution. the slope, or how do you... In the lines, in that case, the lines graph one on top of the other. They share all their points. Okay, now let me see if you guys are all unmuted, and um, I think someone, a couple of you or me have muted yourself. Are there any questions about that? And I'm going to open the questions box in case I don't um, need to, or someone's typing, you know. Okay. Okay, the two lines are parallel. How do you know the slope is the same? Well, you know how to find the slope. Oh, I see what you're getting at. Okay. Okay, let me get to that then. Let's, let's, let's take a look. How do I check the slope on those? Okay, we had said that when the lines are in standard form like that, there's actually a formula for slope in standard form. Or you could solve them both for y. But check it out. When you have this, okay, I'm up top there, top right hand. 
Okay, when you have this form, the standard form AX plus BY is equal to C. And remember that A, B, and C are integers. And we said that we want A, the first the leading coefficient, is positive. Okay? All right, when that is the case, and that means it's in standard form, okay? So, and typically, if I give you something with X and Y on the same side in this context, it'll be standard form. Then if you have that, then the slope, you can get the slope by this. Slope, the opposite of A over B. So look at number one over there. I'm going to go to the left of each of these. Okay, so number one, the slope would be what? The opposite of one over negative two right, 1 over negative 2, so that would be what? The opposite of negative 1 half is positive 1 half, okay? And then for equation 2, okay, that's slope 1, okay, so slope 2 would be the opposite of, I'm going to go, wait, let me go down a little bit and do that, slope 2, opposite of 2 over negative 4 right, which would be, again, one-half. It simplifies to one-half. You see, that's the deal. It They simplify to the same number. Okay, you guys to go ahead and try solve this one. And uh, I'm going to go, when I do solve it, I'm going to go ahead and do elimination. But you can do either one, okay. So solve this one, 5x minus 2y. Uh, is equal to 10, and then the equation 2 is x minus y equal to negative 1, negative 1. Okay, what I'm going to do is um, I want you guys to try this, try to get us, stay a step ahead of me. So I'm going to use elimination on this one, okay? Elimination. Elimination meaning we we begin by eliminating one of the variables. Now, when we did substitution, we eliminated one of the variables by substituting one equation into the other. In elimination method, is the one where you can you make it so that you can add the like terms of equation in the equations. So what's going to happen here is I'm going to make it so that my uh, x terms will cancel. What do I need here? I need, I have this positive 5x here. I would like to have a negative 5 on this second x, right? So this is equation 1, equation 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute through the whole equation on the left and to the right. I'm going to multiply through equation 2 on both sides should be a given. Y'all should understand that. Multiply the whole equation by a negative 5 in order to make it cancelable. The x's will be cancelable. Okay. And so, all right. Let's see. I'll make that big screen for y'all. So let's do that. So we're going to have equation 2. I'm going to take equation 2 down. Take a negative 5 on through the left side and negative 5 and through the right side, okay? And so let's do that. x minus y, negative 1. So let me go ahead and follow through with that. Negative 5x, positive 5y is equal to net, oh, excuse me, positive 5, excuse me. All right. And so now what I have, now my new, my new system, okay? So my updated system, here's equation 1, 5x minus 2y is equal to 10. And now my new equation 2, right, so this is going to be my new equation 2. With this is going to be negative 5x plus 5y is equal to 5. Now, a lot of what I just did with as far as distributing the negative 5 through, you could do that part in your head and just kind of get this if you practice it. So it doesn't really take this long to do normally. Okay, so now what we do is we combine like terms of each of the, the two equations. So these guys cancel. Negative 2y plus 5y is 3y. And I have what? 15 equal to 15. Now I have y 
only y in the equation and I can solve for y. The y is 5. So what you do is that's not it, right? We have to get an x to take the simpler of the two equations. I'm going to take the original version of equation 2. Okay, x minus y equal to negative 1. And I'm going to plug this in here for y. And I'm going to get my x. So x minus 5 is negative 1. And so add 5 to both sides. And x is going to be 4. So there's your solution point, okay? So when it's all said and done, the solution point, 4, 5, make sure it's x, y, okay? x, y is the solution. That's where the two lines intersect. It's the solution point. Okay? Done. Okay, doke. Um, so that's that one linear inequalities. Now the biggest deal when you gr when you graph an inequality, okay, remember that when you have just less than or greater than, you're, if you have less than or greater than, the end borderline is not included. It's excluded, right? So you use the dotted line, okay? For less than or equal to, when you're including your border or your endpoints, you're going to do the solid line, and that does show that you're including it. Okay? All right, and that's the big deal for this one. Of course, the, um, the rules still apply that if you multiply through by a negative value, multiply or divide, you still swap the direction of the inequality, but that's really the only difference when you solve um, one of these, when you're solving the inequalities as opposed to equations. Okay. Okay, let me get that thing. Up. Come on. <laughs> My little tablet's going so slow. Ah, here it is. Okay. So this is going to be this one. Okay, here's your example. And the directions are going to be just to solve uh, the system by graphing. All right. And so let's look at this one, I'll probably have them already solved for y. Remember, you do, you, the preference is to solve it for y right away if it's not already done. So, but these will probably be like that already. Okay, here we go. Okay, so let's look at this, okay? We're going to take Inequality 1, let's label them inequality 1 and inequality 2, 1 and 2. So let's just go ahead and begin by graphing the first one, okay? All right, so my scratch work here will be for inequality 1. I want to begin by graphing the line y is equal to negative 2x minus 1. Now, yesterday we did work on some of the graphing skills we saw, and we learned or we practiced just graphing using the y-intercept and the slope. And I highly recommend you do that for this skill. It's always go back and check your work. So first thing, we're going to graph the line y is equal to negative 2x minus 1. And then secondly, we will graph... the y is equal to 2x plus 3. Okay, so let's begin with the first one. Okay, the y-intercept here is what? 0, negative 1. That's here. Okay, and the slope, the rise over run, is negative 2. And really we could say it's negative 2 over 1, right? So negative 2, remember it's rise over run. And the direction you go in as far as rise or fall is negative or positive, okay, or positive or negative. And negative 2 means we're actually going to go down 2. So we're going to do that. Let's see. Okay. So we're going to go 1, 2, run 1 to get to this point. Okay. So this is my next point in red here. So what point is that? So let's label our points too. We have 0, negative 1, and we have 1, 
one, two, three down. Three is negative three. One, negative three. Okay. And so now we can do that in the other direction by doing what? Remember this one? We could also say this is two over negative one, right? Which simplifies to negative two. So remember you have to do that. If it, it's rise over run backwards one in that case. So check it out. Okay, let me get that. Okay, so from my original point there, I'm going to go rise two, one, two, negative one, run, and we get here, okay? And so you notice it is lining up with the other points, so that's good. At any rate, this is going to be our line, okay? Now, should this be dotted or should it be solid, right? If it's greater than it means it's excluding the border line so this line is actually the points that are on this line are actually excluded so I'm gonna get my eraser and turn this into a dotted line okay that's what I was trying to say earlier so it should be a dotted line and I'm gonna go ahead and actually fill it in with the black line okay all right are there any questions so far so go ahead and begin graphing the second one. Now the second inequality is going to be a solid line because it's less than or equal to. So the end line endpoints are included. So that one you don't have to worry so much. We're going to shade afterwards, okay? We get to the shading after. So let's graph the second line. 2x plus 3. Okay, our y-intercept is at 0, 3. Okay. I'm going to get a lighter orange for this one. Then. 0, positive 3. So that's 1, 2, 3. That's right up here. Okay. And then our slope for this one is 2. Positive 2. Now we can just rise 2, run 1. Rise 2, run 1 to get to this one. And remember, negative 2 over negative 1, right? The two negatives would make a positive. If you needed to go in the other direction, you could always fall 2 and run backwards 1. 1, 2, 1. So notice they do line up in that regard, okay? So we would have this scenario, okay? So let me go ahead and shade that in with a black uh, line, though. Okay. If there are any questions, feel free to um, ask. And I'm, I'm going to check out the questions box. So this one is a solid line because it's included. Okay. So let me make a little note. First of all, this is going to be Y. is, And I'm going to just go ahead and put in the um, inequality because we're going to shade it now. 2X plus 3. Okay. And this first one I did was Y greater than negative 2x minus 1. Okay, so let's go back to the first one there, the dotted line. y is greater than negative 2x minus 1. Let me get my highlighter. Make sure I don't have any questions in the questions box. Okay, y'all are good so far? Okay, cool. Okay, so y is greater than, the reason we get you to solve it for y, we want you to, to get y by itself on the left is this okay and let's see this is the line we're looking at let me um let me get that back i want to stretch this one out a little further okay this is the one we're looking at first dotted line we want to shade everywhere where y is above that in other words y is greater than shade above so we'll shade that one above okay so i'm going to just highlight it Okay, make a big highlighter. Here we go. I ought to take care of it. Okay. All right. So now for the other line. Okay, y is less than 2x plus 3. So for the solid line there, I'm going to get a different color. I'm going to make a yellow. Okay. I'm going to shade below it because I want y less than that 2x plus 3. So here we go. Let me make a larger highlighter, make a quick work of it. 
So there we go. Now, everywhere these two colors intersect, that is the area that's the solution to your system. So if you look over to the right, the little, I guess, triangle-y uh, area, I'm going to trace it out in red here. So this area here, okay, this is your solution interval. Or, yeah, your solution set, even you can put that. So, you would look for a graph that had the, the right, uh, I guess, yeah, area region, the defined region that's you both, the, both of the shaded regions. <laughs> both of your shadings intersect. That region, that's going to be your answer. Okay. But that's the deal. That's a. Uh, what that's going to be like. That's going to be pretty simple. Cut and dry. No tricks. Y'all, I don't do tricks. I'm not a tricker. I'm not one of those people. So I'm not one of those teachers. I really don't throw any punches. I'm not like that at all. So um, why that area is shaded. Okay. Remember the reason. This is how we're going to do. Um, you could test it. Yeah. Kimberly, do you understand that if it's Y greater than, you're going to shade greater than or above the line. If it's less than, Y is less than, shade below the line. You just want to do one line at a time. One inner, inner, yeah. So then, this is why I'm saying just handle one inequality at a time. Wherever, wh whatever the region is where your shadings intersect, wh wherever you shade using both colors, like my highlighter turned green, on my screen, right? That area is a solution for both of those inequalities. So that would be the solution to the system. That's like the intersection. Trick to that, to understanding that, is solving for y. Get y by itself in the beginning in both the inequalities. All right, let's go on. Listen to me. Perform the indicated operation if and or simplify, okay? That just means if it's a multiplication problem, multiply. If it says divide, divide, you know, that's all it is. Real general. And then simplify. This is pretty simple. 4 to the negative 1 plus 7x to the 0. I'm going to write a few problems up here, okay? And you guys begin. You guys get started. Remember that the exponent applies only to what it's attached to. Okay, in the next example, we'll do two of these just to kind of get it out of my system. Okay, a to the negative 2, b to the 4th power over c to the negative 1, all in parentheses, all raised to the 4th power. Here is the first thing I want to do is the negative exponent. I can't carry any exponent out unless it's positive, so you got to fix those negative exponents. So First step will be this, what, 1 over 4, okay? Now the 0 attaches to the x, right? So this really becomes, excuse me, okay, 7 times 1, right? x to the 0 is 1. So this will be 7 and 1 fourths, right? Or what, what, 29 fourths, okay? You could you could do the the you could also get the common denominator of four if you want to, and um, I can go through that with y'all if you want. It's pretty simple. Let's see, one fourth plus, and we'll have four seven times four is twenty eight. That makes twenty nine fourths. Okay, so this this is the common denominator. Okay, now let's go to B. I'm, like I said, I'm going to kind of hurry through these to kind of get to the good stuff, okay? All right, so the for B will be this. We'll go ahead and we're going to fix these guys first. Now, you can go ahead and, and bring in the outside 4 and multiply it by the other exponents. I like to fix my inside exponents first sometimes. There's more than one way to do this problem. The one I'm showing you now, there is more than one way to go about it. So if you guys did it differently, don't panic. It's okay. You probably just make sure you get the right solution. Okay. So we should have c to the first power, b to the fourth power, and then a squared is in the denominator. 
Notice the A turn the A factor and the C factor swapped out because of the negative exponent. Now I'm gonna bring that four outside four in. Okay, multiply. I'm raising a power to a power, I multiply. C to the fourth, B to the sixteenth, over A to the eighth. Done. Okay. All right, and um, every now and then I'm checking to see if there are any hands raised or anything. So make sure if you put a question in, you raise your hand if it's not raised. So I can see the little hand icon in the corner of my screen. Now for C, I'm just going to distribute this one. I'm going to distribute negative 2Y. Now when you're doing distributing a variable into the same variable like this one, remember when you multiply straight across, you add your exponents, okay, with the, we have like bases. So in other words, you see, the rule is this. If I multiply, okay, straight across, like bases, like that, I'm going to have b to the m plus n, right? So, all right. So in other words, go ahead and distribute this guy here here and here, right? So we'll have what? Negative 6 y to the first power times y squared 1 plus 3. 1 plus 2 is 3, right? So y to the third power. Okay, now negative 2 times 4, negative 8. y times y, 1 plus 1 is 2, right? Okay, simple as that. Keep it simple, y'all. Don't try to rewrite the problems. Don't try to make anything more than what it simply is, okay? Okay, so this will become plus 20. Why? Don't forget your variable. Okay, and that's the end of this one. This is done. It's simplified. I cannot combine any of these terms. They are not like terms. Remember, like terms means not only does the variable have to match, but the exponent on the variable has to match as well. So be careful with that. Okay, let's go to D. Now, when you see something like this, you have a binomial squared. The best thing to do first, the very first thing you want to do is just write it out. 2A plus B. Write it out however many times this tells you to. So we want to write that twice in multiplication as multiplied by itself. And now we have a binomial times a binomial, and we can FOIL. You guys should all know how to FOIL. What I'm going to do right here, though, is I'm going to show you guys, because we're going to have one like F, I'm going to show you guys, this is the same thing as FOILing. It's just we look at it in a little different way. I'm going to take each term in the first polynomial and distribute it into the second polynomial. So I'm going to take 2A, multiply it times 2A plus B. If you FOIL it, you're going to get the same thing, by the way. Now I'm going to take the B, the next term, plus B, and set it up as being distributed into this one, the same, the second polynomial, okay? Same thing I did in the beginning. So you just kind of, what you do is you go and you distribute now, and you combine like terms. So you end up with 4A squared, let's see, plus 2AB. And we end up with plus 2AB. And the second time over here distributing that B plus b squared, okay, and combine like terms. Notice this is this step is foiled, okay, so this is the second step of foil, you know, once you multiply. So um, you combine the like terms in the middle, final answer 4a squared plus 4ab, notice when you have a binomial squared, you your middle terms, your center terms there, they kind of match, right? They should match. So it's the same thing twice. Okay, and that's going to be a pattern when we get into factoring. And I, I give you something like this, and I'll say factor it, meaning you take all these steps backwards. I'm going to help you figure all that out. That's not going to be a tough thing to do if you practice these. So... I'll help you recognize them. This is your answer, by the way. That's the final answer. Okay, let's go to E. Uh, let's go ahead and, and this time I'll go ahead and FOIL. Okay, FOILing means first, outer, inner, last, right? First, 
outer multiply in this order, in other words, inner last. So first is going to be 16a squared outer. What are you getting there? See the negative 12ab, negative 12ab. Inner, right, that's your eye of your foil, positive 12ab. And then last, negative 9b squared. Okay, always, always combine like terms. Usually the center terms, right? Negative 12ab plus 12ab. These guys cancel. And you end up with the difference of two perfect squares. 16a squared and 9b squared. Y'all notice that we have... Let me scoot this up a little bit. Notice... Even if you don't know what's coming up with factoring, note that note to self, this is a different subtraction. Okay, so this is a difference, right? Or subtraction of two perfect squares. This is what happens when you multiply two conjugates. Difference of perfect squares. Okay, and when we get into the factoring part, you're going to want to recognize that. Okay, Catherine, talk to me about that after. That's something we need to look at. Okay, so um, now here's the deal. Um, this Let's go to F, and I want you guys to kind of remember what I did up here on the right there. And we're going to use that type of, that method to uh, distribute x plus 2 into that trinomial. If you, you can, you can multiply two trinomials. You can multiply a five term times a five term if you have, if you want to, using what I'm, what I'm showing you here in this next problem, okay? So we'll take each term in this one, the multiplier, the beginning. We're going to take each of the terms. We'll take the x first and then the 2. But we're going to set them up as being distributed into the trinomial. So in other words, the setup is this. We'll have x, right, the first term of my first multiplication. I mean my first factor. So x, and then set it up as a distribution into the trinomial. Okay, I'm getting hungry. Okay, let's do this quickly, quickly. All right. All right, I'm stuttering because I'm so hungry. My blood sugar is low. Okay, you guys, so now distribute and then combine like terms. Okay, let me darken up this color a little bit. Okay, so now we're going to distribute. Remember, add the exponents, okay, of the on the variables. x cubed minus 4x squared plus x. Okay, we're going to distribute. There are three terms here. That's three times you distribute. Distribute thoroughly and correctly. Okay, be careful with your signs too. And just for the record, for future reference, if we have in a review or anything, if I'm presenting something, if I make a mistake, say something right away. I'd rather you guys say something than not. So anyway, okay, let's go ahead and combine the like terms. Okay, we, we're going to begin, and the, this is what you want to do with your answer. You want to present your answer with all the like terms combined, but you want to make a countdown of those exponents. So the highest degree term is the x cubed. That one goes first. Your degrees go from largest to smallest, okay? So x cubed, weak, all right. Let's get our x squared terms combined. We'll have minus two x squared. Okay, let's do the x minus 8x, negative 7x, and then plus 2. This is the solution for this one. Yes, did I mess up? No. Nope. Oh, yes, thank you. Yeah, my cube on my x, my, my opening term. Thanks. Probably did that as I'm telling you. I'll say something if I mess up. So see that? Awesome. That's good that you did that x cubed minus 2x squared minus 7x plus 2. Okay, I'm going to give you guys like um, a couple of examples of types of division that you might see tomorrow. 
Um, oh, I wanted to do question five from the quiz, too, just to kind of show you all that. So let's go ahead and make this. will be example G, and we'll have H. All right, so example G. 5y to the fourth minus 10y squared. It's minus 10y squared plus 3 over 5y. Okay. Let's see. I don't really know this thing. I just realized. Okay. Okay. All right. So um, let's go for it. Now, when you have a monomial, now notice the denominator is a monomial. Okay. So notice this is polynomial to so trinomial in this case polynomial divided by a monomial, a single term. Here's what you do. Okay, simply take each term in the numerator and put it over that denominator, okay? So we're going to kind of set it up so that we just have to do some minor reducing, basically, okay? And that's what's going to happen here. So you set it up this way. You'll have negative 5y to the fourth. Take it as it is now and put it over the denominator. Then next you'll take this sign. Okay, so this will be minus 10y squared. Okay, yeah, over 5y. Take the next sign there. Okay, that's supposed to be an arrow, by the way. That'll go between these two fractions. Okay. So we'll have minus and the 3, excuse me, plus 3 over 5y. And simply now we're going to just go through it and, and do your cancellations, okay? Notice the subtraction comes down, okay? So we are left with that one. 5's cancel, it meets 1, right? Now look, this is what the denominator is 5y to the first power. If nothing's there, it's implied 1. This one y, the single y, will cancel one of these. Okay, this is like the simple, the nice, easy way. You got to leave yourself some room to do it like this, though. Okay, so now in the first term, we're left with the negative and a y to the third power. Okay, and you could always write it out. You can write out the the y's and cancel them one for one, and count the three y's and put it as a cubed. You know, or you can do this. Either way. Okay. And so, let's see. Now we're going to have 5 goes itself once and 10 twice. Now, this single y will cancel 1 off of those in the numerator. Okay. So, we'll have minus 2y. Okay. And then, finally, 3 and 5, or they do not have any common factors to cancel. So, we'll have 3 over 5y. It has to, that stays just like it is. And we're done. That's the answer. Okay. Any questions on this one? That should be pretty good, right? Y'all are good with that? Wonderful. Okay. Good. All right. So I have time to do one more. I'm going to do a long division for y'all. And uh, that would be basically the, the I guess, the last skill on the test, you know, that we have to worry about would be the long division, but it's going to be a pretty simple cut and dry one. I, it may or may not have a, rem a remainder, but I'll show you how to handle that just in case. Yeah, that this is the last information on the test is the division um, of the polynomials. So please stop there. And actually, if I'm not mistaken, it might be page 308. I don't take my word for it. I actually sent y'all, we posted about it recently. So if you want to know what page to end on, I'll let you know. Just text me or something. Okay, um, let me get a good long division for y'all. And let's see. Where is that? We just had it. I'm coming. I'm coming. All right. Let's see. Where is that? There it is. Okay, I found it. It was hiding from me. Okay. So this will be example H. 
own division. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Let's start out. I might even do two of these for y'all just to kind of give you something good. Okay, so we're going to take the polynomial for x squared. This is how it would be given to you, too. You may be given the problem looking like this. The long division is for you to do your scratch work. You know, 4x squared plus 6x plus 1 is going to be divided by 2x minus 1. Okay. All right. So what you, when you see the division symbol there, what are we going to do? We're going to set it up as a long division. Let me put some writing room here. Okay. And here we go. Let me get you another color. Here. 2x minus 1 goes into, that's the, how we word out the house, so the, the long division home little rooftop. 4x squared plus 6x. We want to make sure we have a good countdown of our x terms, right? So here's how it goes. I'm going to go through all the steps, okay? I'm just going to do the problem and I'm going to talk it out, okay? Listen for the pattern in my thought process. Okay, I begin with 2x goes into 4x squared. On the side, it looks like this. 2x goes into, right, 2 goes into 4, x goes into x squared, x times, right, so 2x. I'm going to put, and if it's x, the answer is 2x. I'm going to line that up with the x term in my dividend, 2x. And I'm going to now distribute 2x. 2x times 2x is 4x squared. 2x times negative 1, negative 2x. Put that into parentheses and subtract it, right? Notice when, you, when I go through this, all my x squared terms are lining up, all my x terms are lining up vertically. So let's go for the subtraction. Since I'm subtracting, I'm going to have 4x squared minus 4x squared. These guys are going to cancel. I'm going to have 6x plus 2x. You end up with positive 8x. Right? That's 6x plus 2x. Okay, now we bring down the next term of 1. Okay? 2x goes in. Now we start over, just like we are in the beginning. 2x goes into 8x. So what? 2x goes into 8x. So should be 4. So 4 will line up on top with the other constant right below it, right? So now I'm going to distribute that 4 into my binomial. 4 times 2x, 8x. 4 times negative 1, minus 4. Put it into parentheses and subtract. That phrase should always be in your mind when you get to this point. Say to yourself, put it into parentheses, the second one, right, the one you just put there, parentheses, and subtract. So you put your minus sign out there. That will help you do this correctly. Put it into parentheses and subtract, not just subtract. Okay, if we don't put in parentheses, we run the risk of not distributing that negative thoroughly. It's a very, very important step. 8x minus 8x, right? Positive 1 plus 4. So my remainder is 5. Here's what I do with the remainder, okay? And so here's my final answer. Okay? This is going to be my final answer. I'm going to put it right up here with the problem. So the final answer will look like this. Okay, I'm putting a box around my final answer. and That's not a division house. It's going to look like this. 2x plus 4, plus my remainder of 5 over the divisor, 2x minus 1. So you put your remainder of 5 over the divisor. That was your denominator in the original problem. Okay? 
That's the binomial that's going into the trinomial. This is how you handle your remainders. Okay. Some of some of the multiple choice questions may put it may may represent your answer as 2x plus 4 with and on the side remainder 5. Okay, just at any rate, just be aware of the different ways the remainder could be handled. That's my point there. Okay. All right, you guys, we're going to have to, um, I'm actually out of time right now. We're going to have to uh, do this. I'm going to post.